Okay, the epoxy's all dry. Now it's time to take everything off. Take our clamp off. There we go. And that's why I put that tape on it there. A little bit sticky. Take that clamp off. Away. And it's easier to see. <clears throat> so now you can see it's all glued up. Looks pretty good. It looks like that hole there was filled in good. So there we go. We're good. And it'll be all smooth on top. Uh, all we got to do now is take off this tape. And I take this off because I, um, any glue that's on near the top, I want to go ahead and take off before and clean off before I do the final sanding. Very careful with the pick there. There we go. And you can see how some of the tape is still stuck in around the top there. And what I'll do to get that off is I'll just take a razor blade and be very careful and go around and get it off. And now all we got to do is um, cut off the remainder of our pins. See that pin did not go quite even like I was hoping. The other one looks a little bit more even. That's alright, it doesn't really matter too much anyway. Here's some excess epoxy. But we're gonna go around. We're gonna cut off our our pins here. Same idea as before when you're cutting them. Make sure it's not too close to the wood that way when you squeeze it doesn't put pressure on trying to pull it out. And let's get this other one. Another thing that works really well are these like mini bolt cutters, but they don't have as quite close, uh, they're not quite as close to the, uh, you can't get as close with them. They do work really well. There we go. And I will go ahead and file these down now. And I'll file it that side, I'll file this side and this side. And then what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to trim all this excess BS up there by the metal off with a razor blade. I'm going to put some tape back over the pick here and then I'm going to finish the sanding. So let's sand this down and cut the glue off. I figured I'd show how I cut this excess stuff at the top because <clears throat> it kind of matters a little bit especially if your blade's not really straight. You might even then you might if you go down like this you might scrape your blade. So what I do is all that excess right there, I cut around the edge of the handle there and just push straight down, not too hard. I don't drag it. Just push straight down and you'll see the excess just move off there and then just very gently get it off. There you go. And that helps do that. I cut off everything around the top, up the edge around the blade, cleaned it up, re-taped it up nice, kind of thick just in case, and now I'm going around sanding everything back up. The main thing I'm uh, paying attention to is make sure the metal's lined up there on both ends, and then on the sides here, um, yeah, just time to start sanding and polishing up. The, this end right here is already done, so I'm not going to worry about that till I get to my final grid. I'll go it over one more time. Otherwise, uh, here you go, just finish sanding it up, take to 800 grit. Okay, we're all done sanding now. It's pretty much in its final form. The only thing got left to do is up here, there's a little bit of cleanup to do on the blade here. I might get some alcohol, see if there's any extra stuff I can get off. Looks like some sticky stuff from the tape. And then um, I might go over the blade with uh, both polishes again real quick, just to make sure it's nice and shiny, just with my hands. Then after that, We'll do the finish on our handle. Alright everyone, this is my favorite part, the finishing. We have a lot of options, I have them already. Before we get into the wood finishes though, let's look at our acrylics. So my second favorite thing to do is sanding. You can see that even acrylics, they just, you sand them the whole way. You really don't have to finish them with anything. And this is what you get. The bottom is before, the top is after. And you can use some like polishes and stuff to sand it up, to sand it up more. But even just sandpaper, it looks great. Here's a few more examples. So 
acrylics look great. So if you're doing acrylics, you just take it through all the grits as far as you would like. It just, it only gets more shiny. And here's like a, uh, like an ac acrylic wood mixture here. Let's see, it just, it shines. Acrylics are beautiful. I love acrylics because they do shine like that, but I personally don't like using them so much just because they're more slippery. I like this one because it has more wood up here and it's not as slippery as the acrylic area. Now for our woods. So we'll start left or right. Over here we can always do any sort of wood stain. If you're choosing stains or anything Generally, you want to do something that's non-toxic because you will be using it with your hands. Uh, I've only used this once. Honestly, I don't remember what it was on. Um, it's all right. If you find something, if you know how to do finishing stuff and you know what you're doing, you probably have better luck at that than I would. The next thing is just finishing wax. And with this stuff, I don't think I have a thing around here. You can see it's really just, it's a wax. You use a wool pad, dip it in it, and scrub your, your pick with it. And then you come back about 10 minutes later, and then you just uh, wipe it all off, just scrub it with a rag really good to get the excess stuff off. And here's a couple examples of the finishing wax. It actually makes them look pretty good. The next thing we got is tongue oil, which I've started using on pretty much everything. So here it is. You also get some mineral spirits to mix with it. That's just part of it. Uh, this evaporates and I get the odorless kind. Um, I don't think it matters. Either way, I wear a mask when using it just because it is really strong. Here's a couple examples of some picks with that. These are my actual uh, first Radioke style picks that I've made. And the top is ancient bog oak right there so you can see how that turned out it just really darkens it and brings out the features if it's a you know a different kind of wood here's our African black wood right here and that's just that's nice and black I love the black wood our next thing, the first thing I started out with actually was, uh, besides the wood finishing, was this uh, water-based satin. And um, you can get it in different types of glosses, uh, you know, high gloss and stuff like that. And it looks all right. Both of these turned out really well. It brings out the features and it. it makes, you know, gives it that nice uh, finished wet wood look. It looks good. Now on to my two favorites. We have polycrylic, which I actually quite enjoy. Um, I put multiple layers on when I do this, and uh, one thing I've been trying to do more is between a couple of the layers, sanding it down to keep it smooth, because at first I wasn't doing that, and I'll show you an example of what happened. So here's two, the same wood I did with polycrylic. The bottom one is a little bit of a darker wood, but the top you can see those bumps in it, and the bottom one you cannot. And so when you're doing that, you gotta stand it every, every once in a while. Here's an example of the wood um, that was used for that too. So you can see how that really brings out the features of the wood. I really like this. It's it's really nice. Here's a couple more polycrylic ones I did. The bottom one is ancient bog bog oak and potuck. It looks really good. It's a nice finish on it. The top one I believe is called zebra wood, and it is. It really brought out the features in this. It's just really cool looking wood.
and on to my favorite and the bane of my existence, uh, CA glue. I first started with a, a thin CA glue, and that's what this one is right here, but you have to do so many layers with this. It, it just creates issues, so what you really want to use is more of a medium CA glue. And I'm not saying recommend this brand. Um, I'm just using this as an example of there is a medium CA glue out there. The reason why I say that is I've only used this once. And the first time I used it, I used it on, um, I was using this bottle right here, which your eye damaged, and it didn't turn out well. So I'm going to try again with this one, so I'm not positive on this brand. But CA glue just looks amazing. And here's some examples of that. So here's another one of the, uh, this curly, I think it's a curly maple or something. And you can see that just shines. And let's see if we can... It just looks great. It really brings out like the ripples in the wood. It, it just looks good. And that's the ancient bog oak on the other side. That wood right here. Here's another one with the same exact two woods. The ancient bog oak on the ends and that curly maple in the middle. You can see, just look at the curls and that wood in the middle. It really makes it pop. One of the problems I've had with it though, and I'm trying to work on that, is the tips sometimes, they get unstuck from the wood and it looks white like that. And it's happened on a few of my picks and that just really sucks. So I'm gonna start trying to spray the the activator on it before I put the glue on next time. Here's another product in African bog oak. So here's our product. That might be blood wood. I think it's product. And here's another really just gorgeous one. I believe it's lace wood. You can see how it really just makes all that those features in there pop. Like look at that. It looks so cool. And on this, this side it's another, I forgot what this one is, but it's a similar type feature, it's just much darker. But yes, CA glue is gorgeous. Um, it's just, it can be a hassle. You want to make sure when you're using it that there's very little humidity in the room because the humidity will leave white spots on it. And I'm not sure if there's any on here. Yep. And I'll show you if it'll show up here. See those little white spots towards the top up there? And right there, it'll leave little white spots. And you have to go back with sandpaper and buff all that out. And that can really be a pain in the butt um, when you're doing it as well. This is the, it's called CA glue because it's called chemical activated glue. And um, at least I believe that's what it is. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you spray this on it to make it, you know, just hold right then and there and um, now you know completely dry up but harden that way it stays in place and when you're doing this as well you want to after you put it on you want to hold it about a good distance away I almost do it you know to where the the poof of the end of this barely hits that that way there's no water from this getting on it as well there's a good video on how to do CA glue by Wes Picks Wes Pool he makes really amazing picks and knives I will put a um, a link below to uh, that video. It's I won't redo his work. He does a good job at it himself. But these are the things that I've used. There might be some other things out there for our pick that is now completely ready. It's all finished sanding. All buffed out. And it's now time to finish. I'm going to use the tongue oil. And you can already, I love when you buy the blanks and the part of the half the side is either glued or wax or something so you can see what it looks like when it's wet because you can get a kind of a idea of what the finish will look like. And this is just gonna look gorgeous. So with our tongue oil, I already have everything ready here. I'm going to get this all out of the way have foil that I'm going to rest it on for it to dry. We have our tongue oil right here already. I have it mixed 50-50. We're going to put on gloves. Let's 
just to make sure. And I'm going to get a rag. We really just don't need much. I'm not saying be light with it, but you just really don't need a whole lot. And just dipping the end of my fingers in it. Just going to wipe our pick down. You can already see it's just starting to shine. It's really making that wood pop already. I love it. It's the best part. Oh, gorgeous. Go. And that's plenty enough right there. What we're gonna do, I believe, does it wipe it off right now? Okay, yeah, we gotta let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes. Let's see if I can zoom in here with that. I let this sit for about 10 or 15 minutes now, let it soak in. Then we come back, just wipe off the excess, make sure it's, make sure it's not wet at all. And we are done. All right, it's finished drying, or finished soaking. So let's wipe it all off. Make sure there's no wetness on it. And just move around to a couple other dry spots and just lightly make sure it's dry. Make sure the tip of our pick is all dry. And I believe that's it. So there we go. There is our pick. You can really see how that tongue oil, the finishing, just really makes that design pop. That is my favorite part. Let's keep it focused on there. Yeah. It just looks great. Inlay looks good. It's turned out really well. These burls look nice. Hello everyone. I hope you found this video series useful. If you have any additional tips or suggestions on pick making, put them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching and have a good day.